Hi there, I just want to talk about teenagers, adolescence and regulation. This is a subject I'm fond of and know well because I have three teenagers. I have two, thir- there's two 14 year olds and twins and a 16 year old. Each bring their own challenges and beauties. <clears throat> teenagers, I think, are actually quite misunderstood because they're prone to certain behavioural patterns. They're impulsive. They like increased risk taking. Um, they are emotional, instinctive, impulsive, aggressive, <laughs> reactive. But recent research has talked about actually this being a normal developmental part of their brain development. Um, it seems that there's a part of the brain called the prefrontal cortex, which is still developing. It's the last part of the brain, the whole brain, to develop. And the prefrontal cortex, which sits right at the front, sort of underneath the brow, sorry, above the brow area, is involved with regulation, emotional regulation. It kind of suppresses impulsive processes and decision making. So what happens is there's another part of the brain called the amygdala, which is more of a emotional part, which has already developed. So there seems to be this imbalance between these two parts of the brain, the amygdala's normal, mature size, but the prefrontal cortex is not. So the thought, the thinking goes that they use the amygdala more for problem solving which means, and the amygdala is much more known uh, for emotional, impulsive, instinctive, aggressive behavior. So literally, the teenager's brain is not wired up to contain this behavior, so it's normal behavior. There's also studies that show that another process, which is to do with the dopamine pathways, um, which are neurotransmitters in the brain, and they're very important. It seems that the, the, the dopamine pathways are showing more um, alertness, there's more dopamine going along, around at the time of adolescence, which means, again, it, it's linked with novelty seeking, risk taking, etc, etc. So you've got these two patterns. Um, if you throw in the other challenges that a teenager has to see, I spend a lot of time working with teenagers, the type of problems that they come in are with our behavioural anxiety. Anxiety is a subject, I think, over the next while. I'm going to be talking about a lot about anxiety because it's probably one of the biggest subjects going now because I would say, gosh, maybe 20-30% of my patients in my, in my general practice and I'm sure in a normal GP general practice would be higher, but in my practice, which is gentle, albeit physical therapy, 20-30% of people present with anxiety, and one of the biggest groups are teenagers with severe anxiety. You know, the thing is, is, you know, (laughs) teenagers are faced with a lot of issues. They have, for example, this brain chemistry, that's a physiological problem. On top of that, the hormones are massively changing physiologically as well. The secondary sexual hormones are coming in, testosterone with its effects, estrogen, progesterone, this huge amount of pituitary growth hormone going on, and then periods are starting in girls with um, follicle-stimulating hormone, luteinizing, all these pituitary hormones are rushing through them suddenly. Big, big change in the physiology. Um, on top of this, they're going through this huge physical growth. The body is physically changing in terms of its physical brain makeup, but also its structure, you know. The body's changing physically, and that brings emotional challenges and changes to a girl and, and to boys. But the bigger thing about this is, is this, I think, is to, to today's societal pressure, you know, the pressure to conform to society, to shine, to be the most beautiful, the cleverest, the this, the that, you know, and obviously we can blame the usual suspects nowadays, which are social media, media, uh, popular media, TV, etc., etc. 
in you know I treat children nowadays who are showing symptoms of stress headache stomach st- stomach pro- problems difficulty sleeping you know when they're seven eight years old and this 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 just never happened twenty years ago it just you know it was very unusual um, bullying social pressures con- to conform within group structures is incredibly difficult and these children need help you know they really need help fortunately for me the nervous system expresses itself through the sympathetic nervous system in the body and so actually there are techniques that we can employ to calm down the nervous system and also almost reset rebalance the nervous system and take children who are who are incredibly in an anxious state to calm them down physiologically calm them down and that is it's a wonderful system and I don't think it's the complete system I think but it work it can work terribly well but sometimes you need some more talking support or cognitive behavioral therapy etc etc occasionally you need, um, people need medication but I tend to see quite severe cases I always have um, I just want to talk a little bit about the idea of kind of a tree growing straight this is to do with scoliosis I mean it's it's most key when we're talking about children with cerebral palsy because of the imbalance in the nerve supply to the postural muscles which are often imbalanced left to right there's suddenly a growth spurt so very straight kids with cerebral palsy can suddenly get quite severe scoliosis suddenly at sort of 12 to 14 years old see it all the time and I spend quite a lot of time, especially in the Daisy Clinic we have, trying to keep these kids straight, trying to keep the mechanics balanced, the nervous supply balanced. And we have to work quite hard with some of these kids, but we tend to do okay. Um, but in a normal child without any neurological deficit, there can be subtle imbalances in between. In Often they're, they're, they're actually uh, suffered in the birth process where say for example the head is just locked a little bit more forwards one side than the other on the neck it's very subtle you can pick it up in babies but as the posture develops the head or neck posture develops they're just slightly offline just slightly what happens though is we try and keep our brain straight so as we keep our brain and eye straight the spine tends to compensate by pro- by producing curves are slightly unnatural curves called scoliosis and these can be very very subtle or quite severe um, in the very subtle cases where you've got these little imbalances you know um, if you look at the mechanics of the spine as a whole they can be very much they're very readily open to change so in terms of you know sort of small kyphosis kypholoidosis and scoliosis um, much more severe scoliosis is an area that we work with a lot where, where there is some developmental problem either in the nerve supply or in the mechanics of the spine now those are severe childhood or adolescent scoliosis now that's a whole different subject and extremely hard to treat sometimes you can help them sometimes they need surgery you know but we work a lot in that area it's very it's a very tricky area very different to what I'm talking I'm talking about very subtle imbalances um, often if there's a, a child a, a, a growing child um, or a teenager who has a small amount of sort of low tone or they have subtle learning issues which I'll come and talk to on later tapes um, they can have imbalances in their their postural makeup because of sort of a weakness in the postural tone and makeup and we can strengthen that up in different ways so there's a whole lot of things I mean if you if a teenager comes in you know their brain is re is is developing and it's developing in a certain way and the hormones are going crazy i mean when all often teenagers just all they need is a few words of support but just balancing out their bodies allowing this their structure to be balanced their nervous systems to be calm and that just helps them go through this massive transition point because it's a huge time and often teenagers are misunderstood you know but then but the problem is that they don't make it easy for themselves because they're reactive and aggressive and impulsive you know uh, but we have to live with that as as, as parents it's uh, it's an interesting dynamic so what can we do to help these teenagers the interesting thing is because of the teenagers brain setup actually they are 
naturally inclined to go to sleep later and then to sleep in in the mornings you know in in tribal times often the teenagers would be the ones who'd be out on watch for the tribes because they'd be up all night and sleep all day that's their natural physiological makeup unfortunately our schooling i mean apart from some schools who adapted to this our school system does not allow for it so our kids are you know they're at school at eight o'clock in the morning when basically do they wake up till 10 i'm not sure and the thing is is that physiologically normal interestingly enough so i think they're allowed to sleep in sometimes i think what we can do to help teenagers is they need to do some sport, they need to do some activity, they need to do some cardiovascular activity. I know it's being brought much more into schools, but you know, I encourage my kids to go come running and do bits and pieces of, of activity. Go, we go for big walks on the weekends and stuff, just to almost to, you know, to uh, get the blood flowing through their system. It seems to calm them and help them. Um, diet's very important. You know, simply the less crap, the better. You know, processed food, sugars are shocking, put a huge strain on the liver. You know, this is all very clear. In a teenage brain where the hormones are changing and all this brain development is happening, it's hugely sensitive to sugar and toxic stuff. And actually teenagers are more drawn to eating rubbish as well, which can make them more impulsive, moody and reactive. So any the best way to manage you know, teenagers from home is is through keeping a nice diet with the steady stuff in it, with lots of vegetables, the usual stuff, and protein and carbohydrates in the right balance, without processed foods. Simply managing anxiety. Um, you know, I think often te- teenagers find it very hard to talk about what's going on or to name what's going on. And if we they can be safe either with yourself or with some sort of therapist as a parent to name it, to say, actually, I'm feeling this. It's an incredibly large and huge step to name issues. I remember as a teenager myself, I had all sorts of stress and bullying at school. I didn't, my parents didn't know about it until I was in my 30s. And they said, why didn't you tell me? And I said, oh no, I thought I could manage it. You know, <laughs> they, were, they were very upset at the time. <laughs> you know, so us teenagers, I remember being a teenager, you hold it all in, you contain it. So if we name what we're feeling, I think it's, hugely important there is i mean there is some some research around planning with in uh, planning for futures and planning timetables with regards to exams and and having some sort of clear planning process for them to follow structure um structure seems to help them i mean meaning structuring their 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 um their free time to some degree you know so actually they're allowed an hour on, on the uh the playstation or whatever it is the computer and then they have to you know sit and have dinner together the social stuff is where i think very important with teenagers to have dinner together and all this kind of stuff and not be in their devices you know my teenagers literally it feels like their devices are stuck to their hands they're part of them these days and we have to prize them away sometimes and have a conversation you know um so there's a lot we can do i think nutritional support evening primrose oil for girls to support their hormonal system make sure they have enough vitamin c zinc is very important in a in a teenager um sleep if they can get as much sleep as they can i know they they're prone to staying up late but actually if we can get them to sleep early enough so they can get enough sleep because they need far more sleep than adults you know they're needing their 10 hours a day and we and uh, as adults we're needing a lot less so um Anyway, that's a that's a a start, an introduction to to regulating teenagers.